Hi, I'm Mike Wilbur. Welcome to Fire Engineering Training Minutes. In our last segment, uh, if you recall, we were using a uh, aerial scope tower uh, as an offensive weapon at a row of uh, strip mall store type occupancies. In this segment, we're going to take uh, a P-pipe waterway aerial ladder and we're going to try to use it in the same fashion. Okay, again, this is trying to take this particular nozzle and what we're going to try and do is cut an inverted trench uh, in this building and put like a, uh, a holding, a defensive uh, pose here and push the fire back onto itself and prevent the spread of this fire going through the whole row of stores. But with that said, we have a couple of operational challenges. Uh, one is, is that uh, my, my son, uh, Nick, is going to take and operate the nozzle and we're going to try to get it to uh, go up a little bit more. And as you can see, the nozzle stopped. This is as far as the nozzle woke up, go up. Uh, I learned a little while ago, and purely by accident in the city of Fort Worth, that here on the apparatus are a series of what they look like uh, bolt heads. Uh, the apparatus industry, the nozzle industry, call these pins. And I was able to obtain, uh, out of the city of Fort Worth, uh, from one of the uh, nozzle manufacturers, what we call a pin chart. And in this particular pin chart from Elkhart Brass, uh, it gives 47 different configurations that you can set the pins, and it changes the travel pattern on the nozzle. So, that can be done in most cases. But what you need to do before you do this in your home department is to check with your apparatus manufacturer or your sales facility to make sure uh, that it's okay for your particular unit. You want to check with engineering and get the okay. Um, I've dealt with several of the manufacturers over the years. Uh, we've gone back to them with this particular request and we've never been denied. Uh, the one particular manufacturer, um, when we went to do this, the only thing that they said is please don't have anybody at the tip uh, flowing water when you're going to use the nozzle at an angle like that and of course, we're not going to have anybody at the tip for this evolution at all. Uh, what we're going to do with this fire is we're going to take this glass out and then we're going to push the nozzle assembly in. We'll have the nozzle assembly uh, uh, canted at an angle to get up into the cock loft to create this, this trench. We're going to use this, this water, this reach of stream, and we're going to create a hydraulic trench and we're going to stop the spread of this fire. One of the other things I'd like to point out about this assembly is the fact, what do you do if this assembly, uh, the electrical power to the assembly fails? And it could, could happen. It's happened on different occasions. There's a couple of different ways to overcome it. Uh, and each nozzle manufacturer has their own little trick. With this particular nozzle manufacturer, what they've done is that they've given us a wrench. And on the other side, on Nick's side, we're going to hand him the wrench and he will be able to torque on some bolts over there and he will be able to get this nozzle assembly to move without electric. It takes a little while. We're doing it manually, what electric does, but uh, it still works uh, just fine. Thanks, Nick. Okay, one last point to be made here. Just as the evolution with the uh, tower ladder having to have stack tips, it's imperative in this evolution with this truck that again we have to have stack tips. We're really looking for a lot of reach and penetration in the stream. The other thing that comes into play here, if we were to take and have a uh, fog combination type nozzle, the orifice on that nozzle is very, very big and we would not be able to get enough angle on that nozzle because of the diameter of the nozzle to be able to get that angle to get the water up in the cock loft to do any kind of sufficient good. And so we really need to have our, our stack tips again for this particular uh, evolution. Again, this requires a minimal amount of manpower. We're taking a very uh, expensive piece of equipment and we're getting the most out of it. Uh, using as few people as possible. I mean, uh, th this is short-handed firefighting, really at its best here. Uh, great for a daytime fire with uh, not a lot of people showing up, uh, and you can use this. Uh, it's a great offensive weapon. 
uh, you'll be able to save a lot of property with this particular evolution. This is Mike Wilbur for Fire Engineering Training Minutes. We'll see you next time.